As we all know, the talented and space exploration pioneering firms Blue Origin and SpaceX have a lot in common. Ambitions to reduce the cost of travel to space with reusable rockets, affluent Silicon Valley founders, and even staff who have jumped from one company to the other. Their rivalry has shown itself in Twitter spats and legal battles over patents, launch site leases, and most importantly, lucrative government satellite launch and moon landing contracts. Blue Origin's top talent moving to competition is the most recent kind of rivalry, and it's beginning to look like the hits will never stop for Blue Origin. Despite being led by a visionary, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin has so far lost out on a $2.9 billion contract to SpaceX, and Virgin Galactic has beaten it to the accolade of transporting the first billionaire CEO to space. According to a new report, Blue Origin has lost around 17 key staffers just this summer. Many former Blue Origin personnel have gone for ostensibly better pastures, such as Nitin Arora, the company's ill-fated lunar lander program's main engineer, who's joined rival SpaceX. Aurora worked with Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin for more than two years, most recently as part of the team developing the Space Ventures human landing technology. His judgment and choice to move follows Blue Origin's unsuccessful appeal and planned litigation against NASA for awarding SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to return astronauts to the moon. Former NASA astronaut Jeff Ashby, one of the directors of the new Shepard launch program, is another key top talent that has decided to change companies. Lauren Lyons, for one, revealed her entry into the Unicorn Firefly aerospace team. Other top talent who have left the company include Steve Bennett, Senior Vice President of New Shepard, Scott Jacobs, National Security Sales Director, Bob S, Senior Director of New Glenn, Todd Byquist, New Glenn First Stage Senior Director, Bill Scammell, Senior Finance Manager for New Glenn, Christopher Payne, Senior Manager of Production Testing, Nate Chapman, New Shepard Technical Project Manager, Dave Sanderson, Senior Propulsion Design Engineer, Rachel Foreman, HLS Senior Human Factors Engineer, Jack Nelson, Lead B E4 Controller Integration and Test Engineer, among others. Employee evaluations on job site Glassdoor frequently mention unhappiness with executive management and a slow bureaucratic structure among those who announced their departure from Blue Origin. When comparing employee satisfaction with Blue Origin's leadership to that of other major space corporations, Glassdoor indicates a significant gap. According to Glassdoor, only 15% of Blue Origin employees approve of CEO Bob Smith, compared to 91% for SpaceX's Elon Musk and 7 77% for United Launch Alliance's Tory Bruno. Some of the engineers that left were part of Blue Origin's astronaut lunar landing program, as we discussed earlier. When SpaceX was announced as the sole awardee under NASA's human landing system program, obtaining a $2.9 billion deal in April, Bezos' business lost its quest for a significant NASA development contract. Despite the fact that the Government Accountability Office rejected the space firm's complaint of NASA's decision, the matter has continued to escalate. SpaceX has been the target of a public relations campaign by the space company. They also filed a contract lawsuit against NASA in federal court. Incentive for talent retention The recent flight of Blue Origin's new Shepard, which transported Bezos, his brother Mark, 18-year-old Dutch student Oliver Damon, and pioneering aviator Wally Funk to and from suborbital space, was a watershed moment for the firm. It was the company's first flight to space with passengers, a significant step toward launching crews of paying clients, including space tourists on a regular basis. Unsurprisingly, Blue Origin paid all full-time staff a $10,000 no-strings-attached cash incentive, 10 days following Bezos' July 20 space flight, according to numerous people familiar with the event. It was not received by any of Blue Origin's contractors. The bonus was verified by the corporation, with a representative saying it was given as a thank you for reaching the goal of sending humans into space. According to several anonymous firm employees, the bonus was seen as a way for the company's leadership to attract talent to stay after a large number of employees filed notices to quit following the launch. Despite this, Blue Origin has a more optimistic outlook on their situation. According to a spokesman, Blue Origin grew by 850 people in 2020, and they have grown by another 650 so far in 2021. In fact, they've grown by nearly a factor of four over the past three years. They will continue to fill out major leadership roles in manufacturing manufacturing, quality, engine design, and vehicle design. It's a team they're building, and they equally have great talent. Blue Origin's Disappointed Workforce There's probably no single reason why people are abandoning Blue Origin in such large numbers. However, it appears that there are a few key factors at play. According to Ars Technica, many employees appear to be embarrassed by their company's high-profile rivalry with NASA, SpaceX, and Virgin Galactic. Blue Origin is also likely to lose additional work in the future as a result of these developments. An anonymous NASA insider told Ars they will never obtain a legitimate government contract after this. 
Furthermore, if the Glassdoor reviews of current and past Blue Origin employees are to be trusted, present and former employees had nothing but negative things to say about the suffocating work culture and lack of employment progression, nor do they care for CEO Bob Smith. In either case, it's never a good picture when a large number of your employees leave. When they do quit, it's even worse when they go straight to your biggest competitors. Cause and effect, Artemis. NASA's human landing system program is a key component of the agency's Artemis plan to return American astronauts to the moon's surface. Last year, NASA awarded nearly $1 billion in HLS concept development contracts to SpaceX, Lados subsidiary Dynetics, and Blue Origin, with SpaceX earning $135 million, Dynetics receiving $253 million, and Blue Origin receiving $579 million. The space agency is next anticipated to award hardware development contracts to two of the three companies this year. However, due to a shortfall in requested money for HLS from Congress, NASA chose to award only a $2.9 billion contract to SpaceX. Blue Origin and Dynetics both filed protests with the US Government Accountability Office, and NASA's work on the program was delayed until the protests were settled. The GAO supported NASA's judgment on July 30. Blue Origin took its fight to the next level on August 16, filing a lawsuit against NASA in the United States Court of Federal Claims. So far, NASA has paid $300 million towards its SpaceX contract, with the payment made on the same day that the GAO rejected the protest. However, according to court filings Thursday, the space agency's work on HLS has been halted once more, this time due to the Blue Origin litigation and will not continue until November 1. Since Bezos hired Smith as CEO in 2017, Blue Origin has struggled to deliver on a number of big projects. Bezos started the corporation in 2000, with the vision of a future when millions of people live and work in space for the benefit of Earth. Delays have pushed back Bezos' vision, highlighted by the departure of Blue Origin's chief operating officer late last year. Delays are common in the industry, where the adage, space is hard, is frequently heard. Bezos was part of the first crew on board Blue Origin's reusable New Shepard rocket, which took him to the edge of space. While no pricing information has been released, New Shepard competes with Virgin Galactic in the suborbital space tourism market, with Blue Origin having sold roughly $100 million in tickets for future passenger flights. Despite the fact that the first crewed New Shepard launch went off without a hitch, Blue Origin had hoped to start launching people by the end of 2017. In addition, New Glenn is Blue Origin's reusable next-generation rocket, which has yet to be launched. The first New Glenn is not projected to take off until the fourth quarter of 2022, after being scheduled for its inaugural flight in 2020. Despite getting $255.5 million from the US Air Force to help develop the rocket, Blue Origin has yet to launch. However, the Pentagon passed on New Glenn for additional contracts last year, instead choosing SpaceX and ULA for several grants totaling billions of dollars, a loss that Blue Origin mentioned when announcing New Glenn's postponement. However, as Ars Technica revealed earlier this month, Blue Origin has yet to deliver its first flying engines, owing to technical hurdles and a shortage of hardware for rapid testing. By the end of the year, the business hopes to have two BE-4 engines ready. BE-4 engines are also crucial outside of Blue Origin, as the ULA inked an agreement to use them to power its Vulcan rockets, opting for Blue Origin over Aerojet Rocket Dyne. ULA is aiming to launch its first Vulcan rocket by the end of the year, and Blue Origin's BE-4 engines are slated to be one of the last, if not the last, pieces to be installed before launch. Bezos has spent the previous two decades focusing on Amazon, but he steadily sold chunks of his stock in the digital giant to fund Blue Origin's development to the tune of $1 billion a year, if not more. Bezos stepped down as Amazon CEO last month, and many in the space sector expect him to devote more time to his space company. Breaking down Blue Origin and SpaceX rivalry Despite the fact that Blue Origin achieved a huge milestone with New Shepard, we can confidently claim that Bezos' organization is still trailing SpaceX on a lot of fronts. Above all, Blue Origin still lacks a spacecraft capable of permanently transporting payloads into space by placing them in orbit. It's working on a reusable booster rocket called New Glenn, named for astronaut John Glenn that was supposed to launch in 2020, but won't be ready until the end of 2022. SpaceX's orbital rockets, especially the Falcon 9 and its reusable first stage, currently dominate the launch industry. Because New Glenn will be substantially larger than the Falcon 9, it has the potential to be a game changer when it arrives. SpaceX, on the other hand, is working on its own massive, fully reusable rocket dubbed Starship. It's already completed test jumps with a second stage and fired the rocket for the first time this week, two critical demonstrations that Blue Origin has yet to provide. Consider human spaceflight. A day after New Shepard launched, four people 
into space for a few minutes, four astronauts boarded the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that had delivered them to the International Space Station, and it took it on a nearly hour-long spin around the orbital habitat before docking at a different port. Or consider satellites. SpaceX already runs the world's largest satellite network, Starlink, which it uses to transmit high-speed internet to consumers on the ground. Amazon, not Blue Origin, is launching a satellite network comparable to Blue Origin's, but it has yet to launch any spacecraft into orbit. It's not as if outsiders have doubts about Blue Origin. The organization has the resources and personnel to develop cutting-edge space hardware. Blue Origin was contracted by United Launch Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin that is the favored launch firm for the US military, to manufacture the engine for its next rocket, the Vulcan. However, the delivery of prototype engines has been delayed, which has not gone unnoticed by the public. Indeed, NASA officials and industry observers have long believed that Blue Origin is SpaceX's only potential competition, and they'd want to see a competitor emerge to help bring the cost of space travel down. That day hasn't come yet, not especially with the fact that Blue Origin is losing top talent to their biggest competitors. That's it for today guys, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys!